Hello everybody, my name is Bright Rose and welcome back to Minecraft. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video because I'm going to be taking the time to talk about some real life things that uh, have come up recently. If you watched the Imp and Skiz podcast recently, Skizzleman talked about his MS diagnosis, his multiple sclerosis diagnosis, and how it's affected his life. And for those of you who might not know, uh, I don't mention it that often, I also have MS, and I thought I would take the time to just, you know, talk about my experience, what my diagnosis was like, and just, you know, put it out there, because... You know, sharing these things kind of helps, and it's good. And like I say, Skiz talking about his diagnosis made me feel that, you know, perhaps sharing what I went through would also be helpful, because it was very interesting listening to exactly what he said. And I'll link the podcast in the description below, so if you want to go and watch that, I recommend you do. Skiz's attitude, as with everything that we've seen, is just brilliant and the way he goes about things is enviable frankly so yeah i just want to talk about things the ups and downs the more humorous parts of occasional things happening and just really how you know i have been dealing with my diagnosis and you know what I'm going to build a bit of a house, or as much of a house as I can, whilst I'm talking about it, just so we all have something nice to look at, which is why we're in the cherry grove. Let's briefly talk about what MS is, because many people might not have the knowledge of what multiple sclerosis actually is. It's a neurological condition that affects your nerves and your immunoresponse system. Basically, what happens is your white blood cells, your body's defense system, gets a little bit overzealous and stops just attacking the foreign bodies, the disease, the whatever it is that it is supposed to be dealing with, and begins to attack your body. Specifically, it attacks what's called the myelin, the lining, the coating of your nerves. Think of it like a power cable or a fiber optic cable or even a tree. Um, you have the electrical signals and things like that zipping down that copper wire, zipping down your nerve, which is sheathed in this protective coating. Um, like the rubber on a cable or the bark on a tree. What happens is your white blood cells attack that myelin, that coating, creating holes, essentially. And what this means is those electrical signals that are zipping along your nerves don't make it. And what basically happens is this means that any signals going from your brain to, say, your limbs are, don't make it. Or any sensation coming from your limbs to your brain doesn't make it through. This leads to the sort of numbing effect or tingling effect where signals coming from your limbs to your brain get jumbled up or just don't make it. Or you sending messages to your limbs to say do this move pick up that thing don't make it that is the long and short of what it comes down to now there are various treatments and things like that there are currently no treatments that basically stop the condition there are many many studies throughout the world based around the idea of preventing uh, this from happening in the first place because no one really understands why this happens there are also numerous studies going on about attempting to get the body to regrow the myelin uh, so that 
your once non-functioning or less functioning nerve is fixed again. But at the moment, those studies aren't uh, conclusive. There has been some success in some various things. I believe then still on sort of uh, low level testing it hasn't made it to human testing yet i believe although i haven't looked in a while admittedly but that is the situation so that is basically what multiple sclerosis is so much like skiz i got what was my diagnosis in my 20s however my story of my diagnosis is a little bit different because initially I wasn't diagnosed with MS. It starts when I was 24. Uh, I experienced symptoms which at the time were diagnosed as something else another condition called Adam, I think I'm remembering that correctly, um, which, without getting into complicated details, uh, has very similar symptoms to MS and could essentially be seen as a one-off MS or, you know, MS light, to put it one way. Uh, but Basically, that is what I was initially diagnosed with. And what happened in that situation was one night I was sat on my laptop just messing around and I went to go and type something. And I distinctly remember aiming for one particular key on the keyboard and missing and thinking, that's a bit weird bit clumsy of me but you know so after a little bit my right arm started feeling a bit sluggish and I really wasn't moving it in the way that I was sort of automatically when you know when you're typing on the keyboard or some such was doing so and this was weird it was some time early at night or in the morning, probably in the morning, given my sheep schedule. Um, and I thought, oh, maybe I'm just tired. I'm, I'm probably just tired. It's It's been a day. I, I should go to sleep. So I went to sleep. And the next morning, I woke up. And the way I would describe it, is my right side, because now it was very much um, also in my leg, felt very leaden, it felt heavy, it wasn't responding as I thought it would normally do so. So I made a doctor's appointment and I went and I, I remember walking to the doctors that morning and I remember feeling, again, that slow heavy feeling of when I was walking and I really have to give so much credit to the GP that I saw that day because he did a number of tests uh, various reaction things and stuff like that now what I know to be the various cranial nerve and reaction things that ASMR has so popularized these days and he was a bit concerned so he recommended that I went to the doc, uh, went to the hospital rather, and went to see one of the uh, neurological doctors um, in the hospital. And so I made an appointment. I got my dad to pick me up uh, because I didn't have a car at that point in time. And we went to the hospital and I was booked in for a CT scan. And I had the scan. First time I'd ever had something like that. Very weird. Um, if anyone hasn't had a CT or an MRI scan before, it's lying down in a big tube that likes to make lots of noise and vibrations at you. Uh, I've become much more used to them now. But I got the scan. We were waiting for quite a while. And the doctor called me in. And I experienced what 
I would, to this day, probably call the scariest moment of my life. Because what happened was, the doctor sat me down, again, my dad there too, and said, Rose, uh, we've got the results of your test back, and there's an anomaly. And immediately, your brain goes, Oh my god, what the hell, there's an anomaly. And I... I don't know if I cried. I honestly can't remember. Um, I remember getting very panicky. Um, and I believe the first words out of my lips were... Is it cancer? And he responded with, I don't know. We're going to have to do a more detailed test. We're going to have to book you in for an MRI. And I, that's what happened. I was admitted to the hospital. Um, I was, as I say, 24. And I was admitted to the stroke ward of the hospital uh, because they did honestly know what was happening at that time. And the stroke ward was the <laughs> the best place um, to deal with it. So I was a 24-year-old uh, in a... <laughs> In a ward where the probably the previously the average age was in their sixties, which was weird. Um, there was a few emotional moments as I contacted Danny and told them, "Look, don't be worried, but I'm in hospital." Uh, had a similar conversation with my mum because she didn't know at that point, and. Yeah, that kind of happened. And it was a thing. And it was a little while. In fact, I think it was the night of that. I'm messing up typing this in. Excuse me. Um, there we go. Uh, it was the night that I was admitted into the hospital that the same doctor uh, came to me and said we've had a look at the results of your uh, MRI and we think it's multiple sclerosis and at the time I didn't really know a lot about multiple sclerosis um, I didn't know anybody that had been affected by it and Again, the the first words out of my lips were, is it fatal? And uh, the doctor was very good. The doctor was very reassuring. Um, and they said, well, no, it's not. It is an incurable thing. Uh, but there are treatments and you it can be managed. I was still very shook up, but uh, this was the situation we were in. And the next day or so, I don't really remember, but um, the same doctor came to me uh, the next day and said, look, Rose, we've had a talk with one of the local consultants and they're more specialised in neurology and we don't think it's MS. Uh, we think it's this condition called ADEM, which, again, is a lesser form, more of a one-off thing, whereas a MS is a recurring thing with episodes. ADEM is a one-off situation that presents similar symptoms, and he distinctly apologised for potentially making a wrong diagnose, uh, diagnosis, and I said, no, that's, that's, that's fair, you know, I'm... We're just glad it's not the more serious one. Um, thank you. And we processed. And 
Long story short, I had a seven, eight day stint in the hospital whereby I was given a steroid treatment to uh, basically hopefully stop any more issues for the, from the symptoms. And at one point I was moved to a different hospital, uh, which was awkward because I was very much away from my loved ones at that point in time. And I had to spend a few days there. But... Overall, my stay in the hospital wasn't bad. The doctors were very good. I had regular um, checks and things like that. And people were able to come and visit me regularly. And of, overall, for a hospital stay, beyond the, you know, initial traumatic experience of you have this condition, it was fine. I received more tests and things like that. They wanted to have a look at my optical nerves, all these kind of things. It, it was okay. And they were like, okay, we're going to release you. Uh, we think you're probably going to slowly recover. It may take a while. Uh, you may not regain full functionality of the limbs, but you should be okay. And that's what happened. And I have a bunch of funny stories and things like that. I, again, I was... 24 on the stroke ward full of people much older than me and i well my sleep schedule has always been all over the place so i used to walk around at night um because i was bored and wanted something to do and there was a number of occasions where it would be 2 a.m in the morning and i would just get up and go a walk just in my boxes and I would walk past the nurse's station, and I was a lot fitter in those days. And I would just walk past the nurse's station and be like, "Hi, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. No, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to wander. It's okay." And there would be distinct amounts of confusion. I was asked more than once by the uh, various staff members if I needed a sponge bath, but you know, everything was professional. And. I got out. I have vague memories of um, the journey back home. I got picked up by a friend, um, and then my dad uh, picked me up when they dropped me off, when they went as far as they were able to. And I slept a lot of that journey because I was very tired. I think I'd been quite wired when I was in hospital. And yeah, that's that's what happened. I have a memory of getting home, uh, seeing Danny for the first time in a few days, and I think I just broke down from the emotion of it all. Um, I was exceptionally tired. Uh, I remember Danny and my dad putting me to bed, and well, the next part is <laughs> what Danny tells me. Uh, I believe I slept for a few days, well, probably a day, I think, was the general consensus of how long I slept for. Um, but, yeah, that was a thing. Um, and over the course of the next couple of months, I got better. Uh, the... Feeling and movement in my right arm and leg slowly returned. And after two months, I, I went back to work and I was fine. And, you know, it was a it was a problem. There was some uh, rehabilitation of basically learning to walk properly again because my balance was all over the place. And one of my legs wasn't responding um, in the way it should be. But... You know, it, it was fine, and I went back to work and lived my life, and everything was okay. And what happened was, I got to my late 20s, and basically life had moved on. Uh, me and Danny were doing a lot better. I was in a job uh, doing landscaping and gardening, maintaining parks and things like that, that I was really enjoying. Um, and it was, well, a lot more physical, um, and 
I started getting a tingling sensation, uh, kind of like pins and needles, in my left hand one day at work. This wasn't particularly strange, uh, because I used to work with vibrating tools and things like that, and anyone that's ever done that knows that vibration bite finger um, is a thing, and that prolonged use of vibrating tools, such as what I happen to have been using that day, was a common thing. But, you know, you just stopped and um, limited your use of them, and you were kind of fine. However, it persisted. And this was weird. And I got a bit concerned. So I went to the doctor and said, hey, look, this is this is a thing that I've got. It's not going away. And uh, the initial diagnosis that I received was, oh, you've you've probably got carpal tunnel or something like that. The symptoms that you're presenting with are very similar to carpal tunnel. Uh, so, here, take this um, wrist splint, keep your uh, arm in this kind of a position, and, you know, it should slowly get better if it doesn't come back. And, well, it didn't get better, basically. And what happened was I went back to the doctors and said, hey, look, I was told it was going to start getting better. It isn't. What can we do about this? And, again, a lot of credit has to be given to the GP that saw me because they said, hmm, I've looked in your records. You do have something of a history of neurological issues. I think we're going to send you to the hospital again just to get a scan and have you know rule out any potential issues which you know i was oh yeah fair enough take it in my stride and it, that's what happened and i had another scan and it came back being a little bit more serious and they said yep yeah, you you seem to have had uh some lesions on your brain. Uh, we should probably get a more detailed scan once again and get a specialist to look at that. Now, this is where, if I could have done things differently, I probably would have done. At the time, it was going to take a little while to get a proper diagnosis to get a consultant to look at my results and basically confirm the diagnosis put it down in my record that i had this condition and it was going to be i believe a few months for as great as the nhs is it can be a little slow but uh, i as i say if i'd have had the chance to do things differently, I probably wouldn't have gone the route that we took. At the time, Danny had a particularly well-paying job, which offered private healthcare as a benefit for themselves and their partner, which we, we hadn't taken advantage of it, essentially. Um, and we thought, well, it's going to take us a number of months. Uh, what... What is this for, if not for this kind of situation? So we went through the private healthcare thing and we were able to get in to see a doctor a lot sooner. And ultimately, that doctor looked at my condition, looked at my information and said, yeah, I will give you this as a diagnosis of MS. This is the situation. You have MS. Uh, there's various options and things like that, but I don't think it's necessary for you to take any of those treatments or anything right now because there's no sign that it's going to get, you know, worse anytime soon. And I was very relieved at this, and they said, okay, if you experience any more symptoms, 
that may be a new episode because uh, the events of uh, new symptoms occurring are referred to as episodes generally within uh, MS. You know, come back and we'll talk more. Now, again, this is where it really should have done things differently. Um, basically, I didn't have another episode for what was about two years. Um, so there was no reason to contact anyone. I was just living with this condition that at some point may have another episode. But I was doing what I could to, you know, be as healthy as possible. I was still working in um, the physical labor side of things. So I was getting a lot of exercise. I was doing okay. And I had another episode. Uh, I felt this tingling sensation again in my arms. And uh, I know it's having this episode. But at this point in time, Danny was no longer employed with the company that had provided this healthcare, so we didn't have that as an option. And I had to go through the NHS again. I went to my GP and said, look, this is the situation. I've, I've got a diagnosis of MS, as you can see. Uh, what do? What do I normally do in this situation? And they said, well, you would normally have a specialist assigned to you to deal with this kind of situation. And I paused and went, Say what? I, I should have a specialist. I should have a, you know, contact information of people that I can call um, and get information and stuff like that. And when I'm having a new episode, this is news to me. And they said, yeah, don't don't you have that? I was like, uh, no. And then I explained about the fact that I had gone through a private doctor to get the diagnosis and they said ah right you you seem to have slipped through the cracks on that one which was nice and so <laughs> i ended up getting assigned a specialist um and they looked at me and they said okay yep you've had this um diagnosis we understand you've probably had another episode we're gonna have a condition to look at it and what basically happened is because i had kind of slipped through the cracks and wasn't properly in the system uh nobody had looked at me and this was a bit of a shock and i had to kind of play catch up with the situation which again was awkward and I saw this new specialist, uh, they talked to me, they said, okay, uh, I don't think you need treatment right now, but we are going to take more of a watch on this, we're going to set you up, we're going to have regular meetings with either myself or the nurses assigned to this area, uh, talking about this to make sure you're okay, and you're going to get yearly MRI scans, which again was news. And that began the process, which I am now part of. <laughs> and uh, again, just make a long story short, because I realise I've been talking about this a fair bit now, is I started getting regular checkups and things like that to make sure I was still okay. And at one point, I had another episode. Now, this was a very minor episode relatively which you know is good from that perspective because it didn't really present with any new symptoms um it was simply when i'd had one of these um mri scans uh the specialist had noted that oh you you're showing some signs on your brain scan that you might have experienced another episode uh just not in an area of your brain that has caused any issues. Uh, worrying, but, you know, still a thing. And they said, okay, so we're going to probably look and see if we can start you on some sort of treatment to 
prevent any further issues from occurring. And I, you know, I agreed. I said, fine, you know, that sounds good to me. Let's proceed with that. And that is what happened. And this led to me being put on the current treatment that I am on. Uh, it is a exceptionally good treatment. And it has ultimately led to the fact that I haven't had any episodes, much wood, um, for a long while. And I've been stable for the past three, four years, which, you know, is exactly what you want out of these kind of treatments. Uh, briefly touching on the treatment itself, it's an infusion where I have to go into the day hospital once every six months. I get pumped full of um, this wonderful, wonderful goo, which I am not going to be able to pronounce the name of, so I apologise. Which, the way it works, is it targets the memory um, cells within your nervous system. And basically, oh, I don't like this, but I'm, I'm continuing. Um, it targets the memory cells in your system. So when you get a, uh, a condition, you know, some sort of um, infection or whatever, your white blood cells treat it as a new thing. They don't react in this overzealous uh, way that they previously have, which led to the MS. And this is effective. It's working. I am so very, very grateful for everything. And it's really not that much of an issue. There is a couple of issues at the moment but that is not to do with the actual um treatment and its benefits for me it is to do with uh the administration things around it but that's something that is being worked towards basically that is the situation in terms of my current health and how i am it is good it's Okay, I am still living with the various conditions, uh, symptoms that I have experienced, which is something, I will say. But I haven't got any worse. In terms of what symptoms I do have, I the biggest day-to-day -day issue that I have is fatigue. I tire very easily. Uh, especially coming from a history of doing lots of very physical jobs, uh, I was simply incapable of continuing that, which led to me having to leave my job, unemployment, and the situation that I'm currently in. Um, any physical activity really tires me out. I, at this point in time, I, if I take a shower, that's me done for the day. Um, I become exceptionally tired. Uh, it's it's quite unpleasant, frankly. Um, but yeah, that is just the way it kind of is. And I am dealing with that. It's a continuing thing. Uh, I have spent a lot of time learning how to manage my sort of day-to-day -day activities so I don't end up wearing myself out very quickly. It's still a thing and I have to be very careful about it, but I am managing it a lot better. I know what my limits are and what I how far I can push myself before something will happen, but I can very suddenly become exceptionally tired. Um that is just how it is. In terms of physical symptoms that I have, my left hand has what I would describe as the constant feeling of pins and needles in it. When you bang your funny bone and you get that hot rush of tingling sensation going through your um, hand and arm, 
it's that pretty much constantly. Uh, it's it's not pleasant. It it isn't. Um, the way I treat this normally is I wear a compression glove, like what people wear for uh, things like conditions of arthritis, that kind of thing. Uh, that light compression from the glove ultimately kind of masks the tingling sensation uh, and makes it okay. If I wasn't wearing the glove or if I was doing extended physical activity with my hands for a long period of time uh, that required me to be more dexterous than usual, I'm definitely not as dexterous as I used to be, um, that would cause a sort of the tingling sensation to become painful and slowly spread up my left arm to around my elbow. Um, at which point it becomes very painful to do things like typing and stuff like that. Which is why I limit what I do when I'm doing that kind of thing and take rests. I have support um, on my desk that I can rest my arm on so I'm not putting as much pressure. That kind of thing. Um, in terms of my legs, I have a similar reduced sensation on the um, soles of my feet, um, which is range. I can walk on cold surfaces and not really notice it. Um, similar with hot things. More than once I've been in the bath and accidentally realised that my foot is under the hot tap. That's strange. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that kind of a thing. Uh, my balance is affected by that. Uh, something that I've become not noticed of. Um, I do occasionally walk with a walking stick when I'm at being particularly um, bad symptom-wise. But if I know I'm going to be doing a lot of walking, I will take my walking stick so I can, you know, get around easier and things like that. But otherwise, that is pretty much all the symptoms I have. Would I like it to be less? Well, damn straight I would. But no, this is where we are. And I'm hoping I don't get any more. These are manageable right now. These are manageable. Annoying and restrictive, but manageable. Um, I have, since I stopped doing the gardening job, uh, I started a business myself, uh, which involved traveling around the country to trade fairs and events and things like that. Uh, since my most recent episode uh, and the fatigue, that has just that's that became I, that became impossible essentially, and so uh, I had to stop that and close that business up, which is frustrating. Which is when I took up doing YouTube and streaming as a kind of thing that I could do um, mainly to keep myself sane, um, and you know it allowed me to have at least a small amount of income through streaming. But that's a thing. Uh, and that is kind of the situation that I am currently in. Everything is kind of stable right now. I am happy with how the treatment are going. It's the... My symptoms, my continued conditions are awkward. But... They are manageable. Um, in terms of the support that I am receiving, uh, I would like a little more support. Um, but that is not something that I'm able to receive right now. In terms of things like support from the government and stuff like that, uh, from, well... Anybody from the UK knows what that kind of thing is like. Uh, basically, I'm not disabled enough. Um, which is frustrating on many, many ways. But... Uh, we are. It is something that I am dealing with, and hopefully one day we will be able to get past that. But right now, this is the situation I'm in. And I don't talk about this kind of thing very often. I will, I don't, at least not in 
public, I will talk about it to, you know, people that I know personally and things like that, but it's not really something that I bring up. It's simply a condition that I have, and I have spent a lot of time learning to live with. Uh, it is the potential for it being a an evolving condition, and we will see what happens in that regard. In terms of my treatment and future treatments, as I've previously mentioned, there are many, many different options. I happen to be one on one of the best ones, um, I believe, uh, which in the time that I have been taking it has been improving. It is a thing that is constantly in development. Um, originally, when I went for the infusion, it was a day long thing. I went at nine, I left at five. Um, because of how long it took to get the stuff into your body. Um, that has improved. Um, the amount of time it takes for the infusion to happen, basically they can pump that stuff into you faster um, because more research, more um, evidence has come about that that is something that you are able to do. So it's no longer a day, it's half a day. And there is current research um, that suggests that the infusion is going to be able to be done as a injection, a just simple into the blood, probably be monitored for a short period of time, maybe an hour at most, and bye, you're on your way. Um, as with the infusion itself, I imagine once you've received the injection a couple of times and you've accepted it, fine with no issues it'll probably end up being something like a uh vaccination or something like that you go in you get it in the arm and then you're on your way and it's an hour of your day gone uh but that is a thing that will potentially happen in the future we will see um as for any other treatments and things like that again though as i mentioned when i was talking about what ms is uh it's a thing that is constantly being looked at. It is not a curable condition right now. Uh, it might be in the future. Who knows? Uh, I place a lot of um, faith, as it were, um, in human sort of ingenuity, creativity, and science in general. I think that these sorts of things are something that one day we probably will have some sort of a cure or prevention or at least the ability to regrow myelin. Uh, it is something that they are looking at. And I do try to keep up with the new developments, but we will see. Um, right now, though, this is where I am. Uh, I can deal with the condition on a day-to-day basis uh some days it's particularly tough uh there are days where i will wake up and i am just in pain uh most days i have a continuing dull ache that as long as i don't exasperate myself by doing huge amounts of uh physical activity and things like that i'm i can normally contain it um but yeah, this is where I am. And one thing it has kind of allowed me to do is get into this content creation space. Um, I was really looking for a way to express myself in a creative way. It was something that I was really lacking with the landscaping job. I had that side of things that to be able to create, to make um design things in that when i was doing the company i was creating things myself i was designing things myself um i really lost all that um so having the ability to be in this creator space online especially with minecraft although i've only managed to make half a lower floor of a building right now you know i've at least managed to do something um but I have this ability to be creative, to follow my passion of being able to make things um, and put that out there onto the internet. And it is a wonderful um, passion that I have found. Uh, there are other things in terms of 
career, as it were, that I would love to pursue and is probably something I'm going to look at in the future. Um, video editing and things like that is something that I have really come to enjoy. So you never know. That is a possible future. Um, unfortunately, my condition is limiting me to what I'm able to do because things like commuting, um, working essentially for a company, uh, another body that isn't myself, would be exceptionally limited because there isn't that much. I, I, I hasten to not call it acceptance, um, it, more of a stigma potentially, but that in itself is a very negative connotation that uh, basically I wouldn't have the freedom to be able to I woke up today and my condition means that I'm in massive amounts of pain. Sorry, I can't work, is what it comes down to. Um, whereas being independent, working for myself, has I have that ability that some days I just can't. Uh, that is a harsh reality, and that is what this allows me to do. Um, and the support from all the people out there, YouTube streaming, all that kind of thing, my friends, it's it's amazing, and thank you for that. You're allowing me to have this level of independence and to engage in the, this passion for creativity that I have. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, I may, at other points, come back and talk about some of the funnier things that have happened because of... Uh, various situations that have occurred because of my symptoms and condition but right now i think i'm going to wrap things up so thank you very much for listening especially if you've made it all the way through this video this is a little bit different um do go and watch the imp and skiz podcast if you haven't already it is very good it is great to listen to um someone else talking about their condition which from what skiz described seems to be very similar to my own um experiences in various ways which again was just a really good thing for me um mentally in many ways to hear um but yeah you have my great thanks and appreciation for all the support that you have given me over the past few years whilst i've been dealing with this all of my love to my friends and especially, of course, to my amazing partner, Danny, for helping me through all of the lows that have been associated with this. All of my love. I will see you again. Bye-bye, everyone.